In this video I'm going to show the setting up of the balance modulator in this homebrew transceiver but before we do that we need to set the levels to the modulator. One of the levels we need to set is the audio from the microphone and the tone generator that's, that's also on the same circuit board. Here I'm using the SSM2167 a little chip which has inbuilt noise gating, variable compression and AGC. Quite a handy little device. So I need to set the level of this, the output of this device so that it's correct for the balance modulator. The actual input level from the microphone on this di on this circuit uh, that I've got here is adjustable with a trim pot so I can set that and the setting of that is set by looking at the output and making sure we don't go into distortion or clipping. So to start with I'll uh, switch the microphone amplifier on and I'll put tone in. Here you can see the output it's sitting at around about 170 millivolts and I can adjust the output. Now what I'll do first is I will um, adjust the trim pot that varies the level of the tone. So that's down here and I, uh, as I adjust this we'll uh, go back to the waveform and we'll see what happens. Uh, so here we are, we'll just bring it up in level and we're at 160, 180, 200 millivolts coming out and we'll keep winding it up nothing happens and what's happened here is we've gone into AGC we've, in other words we've hit hit the limiter on the microphone chip so any further increase doesn't do anything so what level should we set it to well we might set it say at about uh, for an output of around about maybe 150 millivolts or thereabouts and having set the tone level we also want to set the microphone so it's around the same level so the microphone also has a, uh, an adjustment, a trim pot. So I can set that trim pot for approximately the same level coming out of the microphone preamp. So here, are the, uh, here is the circuit. Microphones, a powered microphone, 50 millivolts, power, uh, dynamic microphone. Comes in and has, a little, has had its own little uh, level control. And here is the tone oscillators inside this little block. And they... Um, also have their own little level control. So when I switch tone in, it, uh, the input to the chip goes from microphone to tone. So we, we do have a test point at the uh, trim pots. This is the signal coming out of the tone trim pot and I've set that around about 100 millivolts, maybe a little bit more peak to peak. And we're going to set the uh, microphone one at the same level. Now I've set the microphone gain control on the front panel at halfway. Uh, we, want it, we want that to be the normal position for the knob. So I'll turn the mic on and start, start to talk and you'll see that uh, I'm reaching similar peaks to uh, the tone. If I overdo it, hollow, hollow, I go into um, a sort of a, a clipping uh, effect where the chip uh, starts to act and pull back the gain. One, two, three, four, five. So that's also around 100 uh, millivolts peak to peak. This chip also has compression and I have an adjustment here for compression. Um, if we have a look down on the TFT display I can adjust the compression from uh, 1 to 1 to um, 9 to 1. So I'll set that at uh, 2 to 1. Now with compression on this particular chip something interesting happens. Here is the 1 to 1 compression, so if we have a 10 dB change of the input, that is from minus 50 to minus 40 dBU, that's roughly 9 millivolts peak to peak to 10 dB higher, you'll notice that on the straight line you get an output change of also 10 dB from minus 30 to minus 20, so minus 50 will give a minus 30 out, that's a 20 dB gain. If we change the compression ratio to 2 to 1, which is this curve up here, You'll notice that for a minus 50 input, as you increase the compression, the output also rises, so it doesn't stay steady. In other words, with compression normally you'll amplify the low level signal and pull back the high level signal so that the change between high and level, uh, be high, high and low, is less. That's what compression is. But in this chip, the output also rises. So what I've done on this transceiver, I've 
uh, I normally wouldn't go more than two to one compression. So I have a switching circuit that switches the output level uh, in such a way that when I have no compression, the output will be, for example, 100 millivolts or whatever. When I switch to the compressor in and it's set for two to one, I have another trim pot that will also set the output at the same level. In here I've made some notes that uh, I'll be looking for 200 millivolts peak to peak for both tone and voice and that will be the same when I have switched compression in. You'll also notice that the maximum output of the chip is minus 10 uh, uh, dBV which is 0.9 volts peak to peak or 316 millivolts RMS so we can't go higher than that and at that uh, output the input level is uh, between minus 20 and minus 30 which is 63 millivolts RMS and that is what's called the turning point of this particular chip where the uh, the wave where the compressions all come to one point and that is the maximum you'll get and it's effectively gone into AGC or uh, gain control at that that point in time so any further increase doesn't give any further uh, increase on the output so here is an example of the compression. At the moment I've got the compressor set. That's uh, 1 to 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I'm winding up the, uh, the level, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now it's uh, 9 to 1. You'll notice it's staying uh, steady at the moment, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I whistle, uh, compared to talking, you'll see there's a time constant on the AGC. So as I'm speaking, I can go into a little bit of... Uh, uh, clipping, but if I have a steady tone you might see it pull back a bit. So in this demonstration we have the blue trace is the signal coming out of the tone oscillator before the compressor and the yellow trace is the compressor output. Uh, the scales are a bit different. One's on 100 millivolts, the other one's on 50 millivolts. So as I uh, as I vary the compression ratio from 1 to 1 to 10 to 1, that's what happens to the output without any change to the input tone. If I now wind the input level right up, you'll see it hits a limit, and that's when the AGC kicks in. Once we've uh, kicked in the AGC, if I vary the compression ratio, then there's no, not much change. That's 1 to 1, and that's 9 to 1. In other words, as you can see from the graph, at, com at high compression rates, when your input signal is high, the, uh, there's not much change in output level. So that's that part of the graph. So we've gone to high levels. So there's not much change between 1 to 1, which is right there, and 10 to 1, which is right there. The output changes only a small amount. But when we're working at low level, say minus 50, the compression will go, as the compression changes from 1 to 1 to 10 to 1, the output level rises from 30, minus 30, to minus 10. That's 20 dB change. So it's very important to understand that. Uh, uh, normal, some compressors won't do that. They just keep the output level steady, but the compression amount changes. In this particular chip, the output level also changes.